Welcome to Getting Sketchy Live, brought to you by TheVirtualInstructor.com. And now, let's get sketchy. Hello there, everyone. Matt here with TheVirtualInstructor.com, and welcome to Getting Ske Sketchy Live, the greatest live broadcast in all of YouTube. And since this is a live program and sometimes I make mistakes, I push the wrong button. button as we went live, but that's okay. Hopefully that's the last mistake I make tonight because I have really got uh, some difficulty set before me tonight and we'll get into mm -hmm. that in just a minute. But of course, this is live on YouTube. So if you are watching this on, on YouTube, there is a chat box, of course, and during tonight's broadcast, you can ask questions and post comments and they don't have to be about what we're doing tonight. They can be anything art related and either myself and or Ashley will will do our best to answer those questions and comments for you. Uh, if you put in all capital letters, that will help us see it a little bit easier. Ashley's man in the chat box tonight. And how are you doing this evening? I'm doing really well, Matt. Thanks for asking. I'm excited about your subject matter tonight. It's something that I love personally. And I want to say hello to everybody from Ohio, Texas, California, Ontario, Vancouver, Norway, West Virginia, and Kansas, and where Kentucky, and wherever you may be. So welcome. We're glad you're here. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to send a special shout out to the person from New Zealand and the one from Norway for keeping up with us with our weird daylight savings yeah, time here in the United States. Right. Because tonight it's 6.30 p.m. here, but according to last week's time, it's really 5.30. So it's all messed up. So I'm sure that there are going to be some people straggling in here at the last minute or some people who miss a lot broadcast because of daylight savings time. And that's just the nature of the beast. That's why a lot of people want to get rid of it. Um, <laughs> and a lot of people want to keep it. I, I like actually getting that bonus of extra daylight time, but I guess it would work itself out anyway. So it's really kind of a moot point. What yeah, do you think? I've worked it out. You in, have? In the wintertime. <laughs> Here, here where, 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 where we live, it gets dark as early as five o'clock around like winter solstice. Yeah. And it gets uh, dark around nine o'clock around summer solstice. So that's a four hour, a four hour gap. Mm -hmm. uh, if we didn't do daylight savings time, it would be more like a six o'clock to eight o'clock difference instead of a five to nine. That's still pretty good. Yeah. So the difference would be only two hours. And I, I think I could, uh, I think I could get down with that. Yeah, I just I just want more daylight. Anything that works out for me having more daylight <laughs> is what I want to have. I, uh, I don't like the darkness, and um, probably a lot of people don't like the darkness either. Yeah. Um, anyway, all uh, this, all the stuff we like to do besides <laughs> making art, we really do outside. Right. That's true. Know? So that's that, very true. That's yeah. our problem. Yeah, and you can also make art outside too. Of course. That's true. Um, anyway. Uh, we'll get to the art making in just a minute, but I'd like to remind you, if you're new to the channel, if you haven't done so yet, make sure you subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified when we post live videos like this or when I just post regular static videos, of course. And if you do like what we're doing here, be sure to like the video, give it a thumbs up. And if you have a comment, make sure you leave it in the comment section below. Of course, if you're watching this live, of course, you can leave those comments and in the uh, live chat box that's going on. Uh, on one side of the screen or the other. I don't know which one it is. Everything's <laughs> turned around. Um, anyway, also, if you want to go a little bit deeper with your drawing and painting, there is a membership program over at thevirtualinstructor.com, which includes a variety of drawing and painting courses on a variety of subject matter and media. Almost anything that you can think of, any drawing or painting media is covered there in a course. We also do weekly live lessons. Ashley is leading us right now through a series where he's painting on a black canvas with oils and that should be really exciting tonight because you're going to start adding the paint to the surface that's right all of our live lessons that we've already ever done uh, are stored in our vaults they go all the way back to 2012 when i started live streaming there's also weekly critiques as part of the members minute and there's also a year-long curriculum for visual arts teachers all of that stuff is included in the membership program. If you want to learn more about the membership program, there's a link in the description below this video. You can check it out for free for seven days and see if the program works for you. There's also a 30 day money back guarantee beyond that. So uh, we want to make sure that people are happy with the membership that we offer. If you want to just dabble a little bit and check out three of the course videos and eBooks for free, there's also a link in the description below for that as well. And also I'm getting ready to go through the materials tonight. There's a link for all the materials that I'm going to be using tonight as well in the description. Those are affiliate links. So I do make a small commission if you purchase through those links at no additional cost to you. Okay. Um, anything else pop up before we're ready to get into this um, one? No, just a few comments about daylight savings time. That's oh, yeah, what that's everybody's uh... kind of talking about. <laughs> so I think, I guess we're ready to go ahead and take a look at your materials. All right, we'll do that now. And, and uh, I would remind everybody to put your comments in capital letters if they're for Matt or I. 
You may have already mentioned that. Yes, I have, but it's always a good idea to mention things multiple times. That's right. <laughs> All right, so we'll start things out with the surface that I'm working on here. You can just see the paper right now, and yes, I have a Band-Aid tonight. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I, I did not have a Band-Aid 20 Wait, minutes before we went live. Did you photograph I that on the same paper that you're drawing of on? Of course I did. It looks like it's yes. all laying on the same piece yeah, of paper. That's the whole point. <laughs> um, the paper I'm using is uh, the Strathmore Toned Gray Tone Sketch Paper. This is from a pad. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very cheap paper, but it's really great because it gives you a, a neutral value to work on. And it is capable of uh, accepting a variety of media, which you're going to see tonight for sure. Um, and speaking of the media, there's a long list of the mediums that I'm going to be using tonight. And there is a very specific reason for that, and that is because I'm going to have 45 minutes to create this drawing. And the challenge here, for those of you who don't know, who missed last week, uh, my prompt was, your, my eyes don't lie. And of course... The thing I have to do with, with that prompt is I have to create a drawing that fools the eye. So I'm trying to fool the viewer into believing that the object that I'm drawing is actually sitting here. So that that is a form of trompe l'oeil. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to have to draw this avocado over here so that it looks like it's sitting on the surface. Now, that means I'm going to have to achieve some level of realism in a very short period of time. Usually realistic drawings take a long time to complete. And because of the limitations of the time limit, I'm going to have to get real creative with my media. And that's the whole uh, point of this season of getting sketchy is getting creative. Mm -hmm, and right. uh, so I've had to get creative with the media and we'll go through that in just a minute. But speaking of prompts, uh, at the end of tonight's broadcast, we'll, we'll reveal what prompt you guys have voted on that Ashley will have to deal with next week when he creates his drawing. Uh, there's still time to vote on that, and uh, to do so, you can go over to the community tab on the YouTube channel. So if you look for my face underneath this video in the bottom left-hand corner, clicking on it will take you to the YouTube channel. You'll need to look for the community tab there. Clicking on the community tab will uh, show you also the photo reference that we're working from tonight if you want to have a, uh, a copy of that for yourself. But if you scroll down a little bit further, you'll see a, a link to vote. Voting will still be open till tonight's broadcast ends. Um, okay, does that make sense? Yeah, it made sense to me. <laughs> you, you can vote <laughs> so through the I show. I say a lot of things and they make sense to me in my mind. But a lot of times uh, it doesn't uh, make sense to other people. Um, and I see you Karen see Naturally there? Art by, yeah. by. She's like reverse saying things. Karen Naturally Art by. Um, did you practice this before this live lesson? Yes, I did. Um, and I don't always practice. Uh, mm -hmm. When I'm pretty confident about the medium or the subject matter uh, that I'm using, I usually don't practice. But if it's a new medium or if it's something that's gonna be a real challenge, I do have to practice. And I'm thankful that I practiced before this one because my original plans would have never worked uh, mm -hmm. in this time frame. My original plan was just to use alcohol-based markers and colored pencils. I got about 20 minutes into the drawing and it had looked like I had just started. So it was not feasible for me to complete this drawing in 45 minutes. And that is why I moved on to a combination of media and it's essential that I use mediums that are going to help me do this quickly. Um, so we'll start with the first medium, and that is going to be just a 2H graphite pencil. So I'm going to use this just to sketch out the contours of the avocado All here right. as quickly as possible, leaving out the details for the most part. Just the shapes. Just the shapes and just the contours, and that's going to include the shadow, the shape of the avocado, the seed in the middle, and then that uh, bit of imperfection at the top. After we get the color, the uh, pencil drawing in place, the next thing I'm going to add are pan pastels. And uh, pan pastels, for those who don't know, are basically, uh, it's basically pastel material in these little pans. And you use these, uh, these little applicators here to dig out some of the pan pastel and apply it to the surface. And uh, you can mix them together inside of the pans, but you can also mix them directly on the surface, which is what I'm going to be doing. I have 
the colors I have here is are part of a landscape set for start a starter landscape set. So these are the colors. There are other colors in the set that I just kept out of this palette because these are the colors that I'm going to be using tonight. Um, there is a kind of an earthy yellow green. There's a cadmium yellow. There's a yellow ochre. There's a white. This is kind of like a Payne's gray. And this is, uh, I would say, a burnt sienna uh, or maybe a raw sienna. I think it's more of a burnt sienna. And this is more like a uh, umber, a, a dark umber maybe. So uh, I'll be using those shortly um, for a short period of time also. And on top of that, we're going to apply colored pencils and also pastels. I have a couple of stick pastels, or actually three stick pastels that I'll be using. This one is kind of a, a light yellow green. This is a little bit of a medium value yellow green, and this is a slightly darker yellow green. So we'll be using these guys too. And I'm trying to stay organized with all my stuff here. And we'll also use colored pencils, of course. And I'm going to be using... Prismacolor Premier colored pencils. I've got some colors set to wow. the side that I may use. Uh, in the heat of the moment, I'm going to be grabbing things as quickly as possible and making marks as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So hopefully you'll forgive me if I don't you know, call out the names of each color uh, because I do want to try to finish this inside of 45 minutes, which is going to be a major challenge. You can do it. <sighs> Uh, also, I, that, did you hear that nervous laughter of <laughs> I don't know if I can do it or not? Um and also, I have a few alcohol-based markers that I'm going to use. We're going to use this, these for the shadow, uh, the cast okay. shadow. So it's a little bit of a different texture than what we add to the avocado. So it looks a little bit like a different surface. That's if you look great. at the reference, you know, the texture on the surface is a little bit different than the textures on the avocado. Mm -hmm. uh, so here I have, uh, all. these are all French grays. Uh, this is 20% French gray. This is should be 70% French gray, and this is 50% French gray. If we do need to darken a shadow a little bit, we can do that with colored pencils at the end, but that, I'm gonna be using these markers for the shadow. And then lastly, I have a uh, white Posca marker that um, I'm gonna use primarily for highlights. Um, and uh, if you don't have a Posca marker, you can also use gouache. Uh, or even acrylic paint. Um, you can even use a white colored pencil, although it's not going to cover as well. Maybe a um, white charcoal pencil? Maybe, but once I get a layer of wax down with the colored pencils, yeah. it's going to be hard to apply that white take, charcoal pencil yeah. over the top. Yeah. All right. So, anyway, there are the materials. <clears throat> Let me get ready. Well, that's going to be an exciting get, combination. It's going to be exciting for you guys. I believe Mark it's, maybe had asked earlier if you ate this avocado because it was within its within its five minute window of ripeness. I thought that was pretty funny. No, I did not eat. I, oh, I actually, no. I went to the grocery store to get the avocado specifically for this, and I got some big avocados on their own, and then I got a, a, a little, you know, a bag of them. I guess. Well, that's a, bag, a great avocado a because the seed doesn't take up all the space on the inside. Right. I'm sure you've opened up some avocados that were all seed before. Yes. I wanted, well, I've opened a lot that have really small seeds and those aren't really great for drawing. So, uh, mm. I wanted to find one with a bigger seed. And of course, Jan finds an avocado emoji. I, yeah. I mean, and it looks so crazy. real. It's like, it's just laying there. Yeah. The, it's all right. Done. It's over. Minutes, just it's, look at Jan's, over. just look at Jan's emoji there. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyway, uh, so I got this one o open and I took a variety of different photos because I'm using this avocado for oh, another right. thing I'm doing that's to right. another series of art lessons. So this was, this avocado did a full, like a full modeling session for it you. It did. And then I dropped it on the floor. <laughs> um, so I wasn't going to eat it and I knew I wasn't going to eat it so because I had carved it up it and was it was down in, here on the, it was on the table and stuff. It was it was in the five minute window of ripeness, but it didn't meet the five second rule. It didn't meet my hit, my hit standards for for edibility. Yeah, I, my standards for eating something are uh, very very high. Like it doesn't touch the floor. Right, that's one thing. Sometimes it can't touch my hands. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Sometimes Matt's hands are too dirty for his own food. That's that well, actually is, that's I very agree, true. I would agree that's with very that. True. You, know? you know, I was at Five Guys <laughs> yesterday, and you know they have the malt vinegar, and I love the malt vinegar oh, yeah. on my fries. Definitely, um, but I don't like touching the malt vinegar because everybody who knows who's touched it, you know. <laughs> so I I take paper towels and carefully and wrap it, wrap it, mm, and yeah. then use it on my food. I don't care who thinks I'm crazy. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. Um, all right, nobody so, thinks you're crazy. Enough of 
of me putting this yeah. off here. Why don't you get started? Let's... And we did have a question I'll address after you begin. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to set the timer, and then I'm going to go straight into it, and I'm going to try to blaze as fast as I can. All right? So here we go. Timer, 45 minutes. All right. Lights out. We're off. So, so go um, ahead. Him Smith had a question earlier about a recommendation for flat acrylic brushes, the long-handled variety, um, particularly a brand. And... I don't know how you feel about um, brands of, pen, of uh, paint brushes. I'm not too hung up on the brand so much as the bristles and and the just general overall feel and quality. So I'll use Langnickel brushes or Grumbacher brushes, um, but I find that for acrylic anyway, I like the golden nylon bristles. So those are a synthetic. And then um, I like the metal to feel kind of thick, the ferrule down at the end. Uh, if it's a very thin, sort of tinny-like metal, sometimes it'll bend. So honestly, um, him, what I look for is a brush that, that costs a little bit because the more money it costs, the more durable it usually is um, in, that, in this case. And or the bristles are a little bit denser, that kind of a thing. But for acrylic, I pretty much use synthetic brushes myself. Now, I will say I'm not a, I don't fancy myself an acrylic painter. I use acrylic, but usually only in service to oil paint. So I, I pretty much switch away from acrylic fast in an artwork and switch on over to oil paint where I use natural bristle brushes. So Matt may have a better recommendation for you. No, I think for uh, acrylics, I, I agree with the uh, nylon brushes. I think yeah. you can't go wrong with those. They, they, those have a great, uh, they, they're very flexible, but they're also stiff enough to give you a lot of control. So um, I think that that is very important when working with acrylics because acrylics can be very thick. And if you're using a, a brush that has weaker bristles, it, it's not going to work out very well for you. And also mm -hmm. bristle brushes, like the traditional hog bristle brushes, can sometimes be a little bit too stiff for acrylics. Yeah, they'll dig right through that acrylic sometimes. Um, Brenda, now, does Art suggest Master's Touch brushes at Hobby Lobby, that they're actually pretty good. And I've uh, used plenty of those. I may even have some in my paint box right now. Okay, just real quick here, um, you can see that I've quickly sketched out the contours. I've tried to get a shape that's similar to what we've got uh, in the reference. But I, there are a couple of things that I wanted to mention here at the beginning. There are a couple of things that uh, are going to help to create this illusion. And it all starts with the photograph that I took at the beginning. Um, I did take this photograph so that the entire subject and the shadow are encompassed within the picture plane. So mm -hmm. there's no part of this subject that's going outside of the picture plane that would that would destroy the effect of yeah. fooling the eye so destroy the illusion that's the first thing that we need to think of also the second thing is because we're going for realism um we're going to need to consider the darks and the darks need to have a higher level of contrast than than we would normally do in a drawing or painting that was you know just more for aesthetic reasons so um, i do have a black colored pencil and i will probably use the black colored pencil at the end to just make the contrast stronger and a little bit sharper um, because that again our end result here we want to create the illusion that this object is sitting there on the surface mm -hmm. okay so i'm going to clean this up because another thing that we don't want to happen is we don't want any graphite or pencil lines to be on the outside of the avocado or the outside of the shadow because that will also uh, distract from the illusion so i'm just going to clean up the edges a little bit and i'll also go a little bit on the inside as well we want to make sure all these graphite lines are hidden and now we're ready to start with the uh, pan pastels so i'm just going to take a quick mixture here of the yellow green yellow ochre and white and mix them directly on the surface here using one of the applicators so i'm going to start with a little bit of white a little bit of the yellow green a little bit of the cadmium yellow actually and a little bit of the yellow ochre are those those are not all on the applicator at the same time are they yes okay, i've picked them are. up all on the applicator so now i can make this a little bit lighter closer to the center you I know see. by adding white and we can let these colors mix right there on the surface but i do want to have a little bit of warmth in there and then we'll come back and get a little bit of green around the outer side outside part too there so that yellow ochre adds that a little bit of warmth in there yeah. if we want it, the yellow to be a little bit cooler we can add um 
the cadmium yellow, that's a little bit closer to what we need as far as the green goes, and then we can lighten it up. So we want to match the color as best as possible, but it doesn't have to be an exact match. Uh, another thing to keep in mind that I wanted to mention is that even though we are drawing this avocado, it we are creating an illusion of an avocado. It doesn't have to necessarily be the same avocado. So we're going to use that reference um, as a reference, of course, but if our avocado is not exactly the same, it doesn't mean that this is a failure. Sure, we're just looking to use the there. characteristics from the photograph um, that help us see the avocado as projecting off of a surface. You know, that's the idea. Is that, right. You know, a lot of times um, art, I guess, historically was thought of maybe as um, as your support your canvas or your paper sort of being a window into another picture, a window into a reality, and it has some depth to it, maybe foreground, middle ground, background. And the trompe l'oeil painters, they were they were working to make their imagery look like it projected from a surface, not um, into a surface. So that's really, uh, that's really key here. Okay, now a little bit more cadmium yellow and white. You know, mentioning brushes before, uh, somebody mentioned Hobby Lobby, and Nicole Smith says that their synthetic hog bristle brushes, I guess for oil painting, are pretty good too. So I may have to try those out. I typically stay with the natural bristles, but uh, a synthetic bristle would probably last longer. Yeah, synthetic bristles might be, uh, synthetic hog bristle brushes might be really nice. Yeah, I'm going to have to try those out. I, I think I actually have some of those. Anne says, how do you get the pan pastel off the applicator? Paper towel or have to just kind of rub it off? Um, yeah, you can rub it off and, and get it clean with a paper towel that has a little bit of water on it, just a dampened paper towel. Mm -hmm. um, you can also buy these these applicators in bulk, the, the tips. That's what I was wondering if you sort of changed them. Yeah, and I have three in front of me right now for color changes. Okay. So yeah, I don't yeah. have to worry about cleaning them or anything. All right. Alice asks, how many layers will the toned paper give with less tooth for the pan pastel versus, say, pastel matte? Whoa. Well, pastel matte to is say, in a category uh, you unto know, itself. It's hard to say exactly how many layers. Now, that's another thing. we got to keep the paper clean here. Um, many less, I would say. Many yeah, many less, less, especially compared to pan, past yeah. pan pastel paper. Even okay, now I've got... Just the yellow green on here, and I'm gonna go around the edge here. Just using the tip now. Of course, you can you can follow along with regular stick pastels. It'll just be a little more, a little more effort maybe to mix those colors since they're not pre-mixed on the applicator. My three sons, two fourteen says, I would like to try soft pastels. What brand would you recommend for a starting set? Is it Rembrandt that makes the half sticks? Uh, yeah, but Rembrandt's not what I would suggest for starting out. Uh, they're still a little expensive. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, they're they're pretty expensive for starting right. out. Um, but they, they are they are buttery and soft. Yeah, they are. But there are uh, Reeves. There used to be a brand called Av Alpha Cover Color, mm -hmm. and Reeves is another good brand for if you're starting out with pastels. I agree with that. Those yeah. would be some good good places to start and kind of get your get your feet wet. We're using Reeves uh, pastels right now in my classroom, working on landscapes, pastel landscapes, and uh, they, their colors are really vibrant and uh, they're pretty soft and pretty consistent throughout the set. And they're considered sort of a sort of a economy or or can some of them could be economy or sort of a student grade set, but good results. So it's great advice, Reeves. Okay, next we're going to go into the seed here. Nicole says she's been using those synthetic hog bristles actually for acrylic and gouache, that they have a nice snap. Well, you know, Nicole, I like to paint in gouache. So I might give them a shot just for that. Okay, for the seed, I'm going to grab a little bit of that uh, burnt sienna, we'll call it, and a little bit of the yellow ochre. We'll start in the middle. And just put a little bit of color burnt down. Burnt sienna and yellow ochre together? Yep. Nice. I'm calling that uh, burnt sienna. I think that that's probably accurate. I, I probably should have looked at what the official color names are, but... 
color like burnt sienna. I ain't got time for that. Mm -mm. All right, and on the shadowed side, I'm going to use some of that dark umber. James Coleman is wondering, do you have to spray a sealer after you are done? And you don't have nope. to do anything, James. You can make a choice. Matt doesn't spray his pastels, and I spray my pastels. So depends on how, uh, I guess, your philosophy, your temperament. Spraying your pastels can slightly darken them if you use too much uh, fixative. So you just have to be careful. I, I you know, I, I mentioned that I've got students working on landscapes right now in pastel, and uh, we go over like the three things not to do when you spray fixative. One is pause. Right, you've got to keep the spray moving. If you pause, you're going to get a dark, maybe even a dark wet spot. Uh, the other is getting too close and and uh oh gosh what oh and the third thing the third thing well is there gonna be a test yeah right right the third thing is actually starting your spray over the pastel because sometimes you'll get a harder dark spot there so i we lay them on the ground outside and we start our spray next to the artwork and then move across and beyond the artwork when we change direction so that we're not sort of pausing near the edge and changing direction you'll end up with dark edges so um, i understand people's reservation for using fixative it needs to be a nice pretty new tip you know so the so that the spray is really atomized and it doesn't come out in droplets so you got to you want to test it uh, before you actually spray it over your artwork and make sure dr it doesn't start with droplets or no matter what's in the bottle it's no good anymore you know you're going to get little tiny dark flecks um, on your artwork so you just have to be careful with the with the fixative and follow those three tips that i almost forgot when i was mentioning them. okay so you can as, as you can see i'm, I'm now Working with the pastels, this is uh, that darker yellow green, and this is more of a, a little bit lighter. Brent Desart says, "Seed, isn't it a pit? Brent, a rose by any other name, right? It's yeah, all, it, whatever. All the same. It, if you put it in the ground, something will grow. All right. I guess we'll go around the outside aren't, uh, here real quick. Peaches have pits, right? So I guess avocados might do might." Might as well. Evan says, hey, Matt and Ashley, could you guys maybe speak a bit on what led you both to become art teachers? Lighter yellow green here. Um, yeah, I've kind of told my story before. Yeah. Um, do you want to go ahead and start that yeah, one, Ashley? Yeah, and, sure. Because go I've got to concentrate here. Yeah, that's right. So um, <laughs> I, I came into teaching sideways. I went to college for just plain a plain BFA in visual art. You kind of had a concentration in painting um, and then started teaching about, gosh, about two years after I graduated. That was one of my intentions, um, one of my potential intentions, because in our area and in a lot of, uh, a lot of states, you can acquire your teaching license while you're actually in the classroom. So I decided to go ahead and instead of taking education classes while I was in college, just go for the regular BFA um, in case I wanted to do something different with it. And then uh, about two years later, I'm kind of a people person. Uh, um, working alone all day long sometimes uh, I like it but I kind of get stuck in my own head a little bit too much and so I really need to be around the en engagement uh, with other people and uh, I thought that uh, teaching would be a great way for me to make art every day um, but not necessarily be a alone all day so I uh, went ahead and interviewed and kind of gave it a shot on a trial basis. It was in uh, at the time it was called a lateral entry program, which is literally coming into teaching um, sideways. And uh, completed my coursework during the first three years in the classroom. But uh, that's kind of how that's kind of how it happened for me. And I also majored in arts, but um, my mentor suggested that I look into art education because she thought that I would I had the personality to be a teacher and I had always told whoever would listen to me that I was never going to be a teacher because both my parents were teachers <laughs> um, and I didn't want to go that route uh, but I ended up uh, doing the art education add-on to uh, the 
professional art degree while you were still while, while I was still in school. Still yeah, in school, I yeah. ended up graduating with some ungodly amount of hours, but uh, that was okay. Um, so I went right into teaching out of college, and uh, I'm glad I did. Yeah, you're a talker. You're a people person too. And now, I, I like to say, I'll Ashley tell you, walked into my classroom after not seeing him for many years. Um, and the principal said, uh, Mr. Russell, this is Ashley Hurst. And he was trying to see if, if, if I, I actually knew you. I well, think. I had just interviewed, Yeah, you know, and we were walking around the school and he said, we've got an art teacher here. It's about your age. It's Matt Fussell. And I said, are you kidding me, Matt Fussell? We grew up together, yeah. you know? And so, uh, I wonder if he thought, how would you be here and not know that, you know, that you were actually uh, already working at that school, but we, we had lost touch through college a little bit. All right. So now we're ready to start with the colored pencil applications after mm -hmm. we got a few pastel bits on there. Yep. We're going to go ahead and start with the outside portion, and I'm going to use 90% cool gray for this. Uh, so this is going to seem a little jarring here. And I don't know how much. I've got 30 minutes. Okay, so 15 minutes in so far. Mm hmm yeah, you got your nice, nice base colors down, a little and bit of this, variety. And you there. might think, hey, why don't you use a dark green? And you could use a dark green, but uh, we need more contrast than the, just, a, just a dark green colored pencil. So, Sandra says, I can never successfully blow dust from my artwork. I always release some spit. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Just... Uh, you can't see it on the on. If I did it here, you would see it. But on the videos that I make that aren't live, you would never see it because I'm like, oh man, and I gotta wait for that area to dry before I go on. <laughs> yeah. So, um, we all we all are are poor spitters, maybe. Evan says, "Ha ha! Both my parents are teachers too. Thank you so much for both of your insights." Uh, Evan, I also like to tell my, I tell my students that the reason I'm an art teacher is because when I was in high school, I talked all the time in art class, which is true. And, and because of that, my teacher gave me an, an assigned seat behind the printing press so no one could see me. So I was always in trouble in the art room and that my punishment in life is to never leave the art room. That's what I tell them. They get a big kick out of that. I found that actually the truth is I got in trouble for talking all the time in art class in high school. And so now I found a way to talk all the time in art class without having to sit behind the printing press. So I win. <laughs> all right. Down here at the bottom, there is a little bit of a piece that sticks out. All those little things help to create the illusion. So I'm gonna make sure that those are added in. And while we're up here at the top of the stem, I'm going to go ahead, even with the 90% cool gray, go ahead and put a little bit of an idea of the dark part that's up there. All right, let's go ahead and go around the outside portion here with a uh, darker green. This is marine green. Let's see if that's the green that I want. Well, Brenda not, says it's already looking awesome. It's not too bad. Thank you. That's it. That's not too bad, but that's... Jan maybe says it looks a, pretty realistic already, and she's found the avocado bit. emoji lighter yeah that is the color right there this is artichoke hmm. and we're gonna go quick because we need to burnish this yeah so i'm gonna Funky go groove e50 has a tip i do not blow pastel anymore picked up a small craft vacuum Ooh, like in a wood shop where you where you vacuum vacuum up your your uh shavings while you go well, I, I appreciate that because after a week of working on pastel landscapes with my drawing students, um, it's starting to get to me. I'm sneezing in the classroom like crazy. So what I'm addressing right now is that kind of outer ring just inside of the dark ring. You probably see what I'm talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's kind of more of a yellow green, uh, in, maybe more of an earthier green. The dark, the darker it's green. kind of a baby poo. Yeah, hooker's green is a. Hooker's green's kind of more green or bluish, isn't it? Yeah, I, don't, I think it's kind of. I don't know. I, I thought it was kind of uh, earthy. I'm gonna have to go back and look at my look what comes out of the tube. I haven't used it in a long time. It's a pretty classic color. 
It is. I, I remember that was one of the colors that we had to have in our, our set in mm -hmm. beginning painting class, Hooker's Green. But the most important color that I got from that first painting class, the first important lesson I learned is how important Payne's Gray is. All right, I'm going to burnish this with, I think this color is sable. Uh, that outside ring has a little bit of a yellow. Bit. Are, you, are you using that with more pressure to burnish at the same time? Kind of mix and burnish? It looks um, like it's out. I'm using it pretty much with the same pressure that I already applied okay. the first time, but because there's colored pencil material on the surface, it is it is having the effect of burnishing a little bit. I'm also going to use a colorless blender in just a second here. And I'm again trying to go really fast here. That's been six minutes since I last looked. I noticed a scarf and tea says, I don't think any brands agree on what hookers green actually is. So maybe you are, you and I had different brands, yeah, slightly different colors. That's possible. We've got a different reference for what hookers green yeah. should be. I do remember it being more of a natural green, but yeah, I feel like it was natural. a little bit more. It may be cooler yeah. than I'm remembering, but also not crazy intense or, or bright. All right. Next color here felt, is sepia. Uh, I'm getting some of these dark areas up here around that stem. There's a dark shadow here. Just trying to concentrate on shapes as quickly as I can. Let's go to uh, this color. This is moss green, and this should be fairly dark to kind of create a little bit of a, a little bit of that. Looks like there's some raised stuff, maybe. Yeah. Doesn't go all the way around. We've got some of these little dark cuts and things. Yeah, it's the irregularity that's what's making it feel uh, realistic. Those little, little bit of light and dark mixture around the edge that creates texture. Bring a little bit of that up here too. And maybe a little bit into this mm -hmm. little textury part, which we'll go back and enhance with colored pencils in just a minute. You know, it's the texture that really pushes the illusion, but typically that's the element of art that takes the longest to capture. Right, so and this, that's what makes this a challenge. If I was doing this drawing and I, my goal was to create uh, an image that looked uh, hyper-realistic, I would be spending so much more time on this. I would be working so much slower. But that's not the nature of getting sketchy, is it? No. <laughs> um, so the timer keeps. This it is sketchy. the real challenge here. Um, a real challenge for sure but what it also does is it forces you to work more efficiently you know you have to pick out what's the most important parts that are going to capture that uh, illusion you're after that's that's for sure that's for certain all right uh next color pencil let's go I need a little bit more of a true or green i think this is apple green and it kind of feels like these little pieces kind of come to the inside as you as you can see we're mm -hmm. kind of working from the outside in mm -hmm. and i am trying to think about the directional strokes here it looks like you know this top part was kind of cut at an angle and that graininess oh, yeah. that's produced by the pencils we'll we'll attack that in just a minute Well, Scarf and T, a Scarf and T says, I love the theme of this season. We do too. We think it's uh, fun and exciting and surprising sometimes so far. Now, let's see, Matt, is this your second drawing in? This is my third. This is your third. So we're really hitting the halfway point then of our, of our drawings. Yes. I've done two. So we're only halfway through the season. There's uh this much more to come. And then of course our critique episode at the end where we take a look at what we did and talk about what went well, what we might have done different, and uh, 
just kind of spend some time reflecting. And that's always important to do on our older art is to uh, reflect, I feel like it is, to reflect on it a little bit after you've made it, uh, when there's a little bit of space between uh, that, that, uh, that intimate time that you spent with that piece of art, where we can be a little more honest with ourselves. Maybe that's just me. Oh, I've got a question from Anne. Do the alcohol markers bleed through to the other side of this paper? I think they probably uh, do. Yeah, a they will bit. a little bit. Yeah, but we're only going to use it for the shadow, the cast shadow uh, back here. So it's not really a, a big area that we have to worry about. I feel like it takes a couple or three passes maybe with alcohol markers to make it through this paper. And I plan it's on pretty, going through several thick. times, uh, yeah. going, making several passes anyway. Mm hmm. All right, uh, let's go ahead and add a little bit of the cream pencil next. And uh, this is where we're going to try to bring out some of the, the highlights here if we can. You might have to rely on the darker, yeah, you're going to have to rely on the darker pencil to do that. So let's, let's quickly add a little bit of warmth here. This is that sable. And this is actually going to make the value a little bit darker too. Mm -hmm. And we have a question maybe you can help me with. I'm not sure if I completely understand. It's from Edie. It says, does sanded paper last as long as unsanded or does the sand damage the paper fibers? Uh, I'm like not, like I'm, the pre preservation of the paper. That's how I'm um, interpreting it. Like maybe over time, does the paper break down because it's been sanded? Um, I don't see why it would. I, I mean, don't either. You know, if you think about the sand on the the ocean, right? It's a natural material. On the beach, yeah. It, I, I don't see that really being an issue. Uh, let's only see. with only maybe maybe you're thinking about whatever adhesive was used to uh, to bond the sand to the paper. But there's a lot of archival adhesives out there now, so I'll bet it does not. If we're understanding your question correctly. Buddy's here and says, Hi, did I miss something? Getting sketchy is already running. Um, yeah, Miss Daylight Savings yes, Time. Yes, buddy, it's our Daylight Savings Time. We, we changed our clocks, or our clocks changed automatically nowadays um, over the past weekend, so... Probably you're in the same boat with a number of our other viewers that might have come in late due to our due to our time change. All right, I was using a sepia pencil, but I've switched now to a uh, let's see moss green again. Go ahead and get in this little bit of shadow up here. And now Susan has a question that was similar to what I was wondering about when uh, you told me your materials list. She says. The, is the colored pencil pressing the pan pastel color into the paper? And I, what I was wondering is, is it press it in or sort of move it out of the way? Um, it kind of goes right on top of it as long as you put it on thin. Okay. Um, if you put, if, if there's too much of the pastel material on the surface, you're not going to be able, able to get away with it. It just seems so surprising because pastel you think of as being softer than colored pencil. And usually we use softer pastel over harder pastel when we're when we have a choice between two different uh, like, dens like density sticks. Yeah, you just have to kind yeah. of be. But it works. Yeah, it works. You just have to be careful and mindful of your mediums mm -hmm. and understand their limitations. You can't just cake on pastels here like you normally would. Okay. Because now I can go back here even. Let's bring out a few of these highlights a little bit more here. Where we got kind of a. You're getting all a, that variety in there is what's going to create that illusion. All those. All those marks. Orion Nebula says moss green is my faves of the greens. It's a very useful and very nice color. Okay, now I'm going to do a little bit of burnishing with the 
colorless blender as fast as I can go. And that's just going to make that colored pencil texture that's kind of there on the surface a little bit less noticeable. Mm -hmm. Susan likes green gray. You know, Susan, I like the colors that aren't crazy bright too. I like the ones that are sort of in the middle of uh, of the chromatic uh, spectrum. I don't even know if that's a term, a chromatic spectrum, but from you know from bright to dull. I kind of like the colors that fall in the middle myself. For those of you who don't know, the colorless blender is just a colored pencil without any of the pigment it's just wax yeah so that is allowing me to kind of push and pull the the material around on the surface and work it into the tooth of the paper jan says the fruity outside of the avocado is already realistic mm, thanks i don't have a whole lot of time left <laughs> You got 14 minutes. I think you're doing pretty well. Uh, I know you've got the shadow to work on. You've got some other areas you want to get into. Yeah, I got to do the the pit or the seed the or whatever it is. Right. Um, and still the flesh. There's a lot that I can do on the flesh here. I kind of want to soften out some of these pastel marks too here. Well, Judy says it looks good enough to eat, so realistic. <laughs> you guys are too nice. Well, you know, I think it's, you haven't gotten back to the pit. And so even now, the pit being l sort of like a less realized is causing the rest of your avocado oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah. pop that, out. Yeah, that's going to make a difference. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's move on to the pit, and we'll start with uh, burnt ochre. It's just, just kind of a reddish that orange. Looks like a really good color to a, a good approximation of those darker marks I see in the pit. And there's all these little, like a little pattern over here. So I'm still going to go quickly here, trying to trying to just mimic some of the patterns that I see there. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily copy them exactly. And again, I am going as quickly as I possibly can if you can't tell already. Oh, yeah. There's a little bit of red there at the top, so Tuscan red for that. All right, Susan has a question about painting. She says, Ashley, do you tone your canvas before blocking in your composition? And if so, um, what color? Susan, I use a few different uh processes when I approach a, a painting. Sometimes I do work on tone canvas and it's usually brown, dark brown or black. And um, a lot of times I do an uh, kind of a, sort of a traditional one color underpainting and then start blocking in actual colors on top of that. And when I do, when I work that way, you know, the surface starts white and I do a complete underpainting, usually in, um, usually in a brown also. You know, full values and everything, but there's an underpainting in there before the actual color goes on top of. If I want a cooler composition, a cooler tone, I use gray uh, for the underpainting. And so that's not quite the same as a toned canvas, but it is, a, it is you know, adding value underneath where the color is going to go. But uh, if it's just, just straight a toned canvas, I usually stick with pretty dark brown or black. Okay, this is dark umber that I'm using now. I 
some people like to use a dull green for their underpaintings, especially if there's uh, people, fleshy people in there. Sometimes the green underpainting can uh, work well for creating the illusion of skin. Light touch of some orange here, and then some cream right here. And then we're going to be ready to burnish this in just a minute. So for you guys who came in late, the theme, uh, thank you, Hoot and Holler, again, is My Eyes Don't Lie. And this is sort of a, um, in, the, in the vein of Trump Loy painting, where the image looks like it's projecting from a surface and not receding into space. So Matt's got a composition that includes a cast shadow. That's pretty essential, I think, for creating that impression that we're projecting the avocado out into space towards ourselves. We need a little bit more of a this orangey color here. And uh, Susan, just to add, um, the drawing, or sorry, the painting that we're going to be doing over at the live lesson at the hour immediately after this one, uh, we're starting painting tonight. We've made our drawing last week and maybe a little bit for homework, and we're working on a, on a black canvas toned with just ivory black acrylic paint. Oh, did I grab the same color? Yes, I did. <laughs> Trying to find something that's, a, yes, this is better. This is the color I wanted, a little bit more of a earthier orange. It's a lot Get better. Got a little heat in there. All right, for the shadow back here, we'll use some sepia. And then we'll burnish and with we'll add the shadow and then with the time left we'll go back and make enhancements to the uh, avocado itself okay. should have some time to do that Mm, I want that seed to be, or whatever it is, smoother. More round. All right. You know, Susan mentions that the orange kind of complements the green in the avocado. They are both um, pretty different colors, not pure complements, but they're related as secondary colors. So they're pretty far away from each other in the color wheel. And if you weren't making a um, you know, more of a, of a realistic picture, realistic image, it would be nice to throw a little purple in that shadow, you know, and turn it into a secondary color scheme. Oh yeah, for sure. For, you know, if you had a different, uh, different goal with this one. All right, watch this. I'm burnishing over the top of pastel. Magic. Of course, we've got our caller calling the studio. <laughs> not sure if you can hear that or not. All right, let's burnish this junk right here horsewoman 2000 has a pretty good question i would say why not use canson mitant's paper the smooth side uh the texture is still too heavy it, okay for for what we're doing here uh with with this collection of media for this short period of time it's it's just too heavy uh, mm -hmm. there's no way i'd be able to to manipulate the tooth like i'm doing here Well, CJ9 says, fantastic as always. Uh, well, thanks. And uh, I haven't. And Jan posted it in the Haven't accomplished of my a goal yet here. <laughs> Let's add a little bit more color up here. There we go.
Just adding a little bit. Well, it's looking good, Matt. The seat, the the pit, not seat, looks good, and you still got five minutes. Okay, well, I still need to break oh, out my secret shit. weapon. Right. Oh, oh yeah. there's so much I still need to do here. Let's let's try to make some of these hard darks. We still bit got harder. two media to get through. I, two I media know. that haven't even been used that are on their way. There are some pretty strong darks here and there, so I'm just going to make these a little bit yeah. stronger because remember, contrast is important. Contrast is one of the things that's going to make it look more realistic. Yeah, if it doesn't have a totally total wide range of value from almost pretty much black to white almost, it's not going to feel realistic. Funky Groovy 50 started a conversation about traditional versus uh, digital art and just mentioned uh, using digital art almost in service to traditional art to work out compositional choices and design, maybe maybe make some color choices in there and then move over to traditional drawing and painting with uh, um, with that whatever preparatory work you had already done um, digitally. And Funky Groove E50, that's how I use digital art a lot too. I make I make finished digital art, but most of the time I spend in Procreate or in Photoshop is um, to, to service my traditional art. Either I'm manipulating my references or, uh, like you mentioned, maybe maybe making some choices digitally that I, um, that I plan, to, plan to execute traditionally. Just helps me build confidence. Okay, let's... We've got the black here. I'm just going to clean up this shadow, make this edge a little bit harder and cleaner. And that's with the black. All right, now let's go ahead and skip to 50% French gray. Brenda wants us all to know that the timer is only a suggestion until you of course run over into the live lesson time that's right we've got a little flexibility here at getting sketchy yeah i think i thank you for pointing that out <laughs> yeah i thought uh i had the thought crossed my mind that we would add since um I'm, i can make the rules here <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, maybe we can add a rule to where for one subject we can use the hour-long extension. Ooh. Ooh, that's, a, that's neat. Yeah, but... But we have um, to choose wisely. Right. It's kind of like when you use your mulligan in golf and it doesn't help. You know, you chose poorly. Well, we shouldn't be using mulligans no. anyway. We don't use mulligans anymore. Not anymore. Mm -mm. Um. But I, I can't use that now. That's not without stipulating such ahead of time. Prior to the beginning of the drawing. Right. Otherwise, it seems like you're making up rules while we're playing the game. Right. But um, <laughs> it did cross my mind that this would definitely be a good one to use it on. Um, all right. We need to go darker in that shadow. So let's go 70% French gray. Wow, this is still wet. So that'll allow us to have a little bit of blur around the edge. My three sons, 214, says, looks great. Now I need to run to the store for some avocado. Is that so that you can create your own reference and draw them, or are you going to make some dip? Maybe you're just going to eat the avocado. I eat avocado almost every day. I eat, them, I eat them just like they look right there in the video or in the, in the the uh, on the feed. I just cut them in half, take out the pit, and then eat the contents. I don't, I don't always make anything out of them. Or put them on. I do put them on sandwiches. Sliced avocado on sandwiches. It's, it's great. Okay, it's time to make this pop a little bit more. Brenda thinks the shadow's already starting to do its magic. Oh, yeah, just getting it in there makes a difference, doesn't it? Yeah, just doesn't need to be flat. All right, um, so I'm going to go around this edge here with a black. And just kind of make a stronger edge 
uh, with between the avocado and the surface and that should make it pop out a little bit more I don't usually use black for colored drawings especially colored pencil drawings but you know most of the time I'm not trying to create something that's super photorealistic either yeah a lot of times you're thinking more about color schemes and uh, and color harmony things right like that, exactly those types of choices but all these little pieces we could go in and develop them further of course um, but I know my time is that's almost good. up time's up Okay, so I still need to add the um, the Posca, the Posca, and I'm going to do that. Let me just put some finishing touches right up here at the top. Horsewoman 2000 says, "Looks great, Matt." Thanks. My three sons 214 says, "Eat it." I would like to see him eat that piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, it would be better with ketchup. Everything's better with ketchup. Teresa Brown says, do you think stronger. using an art AI is okay to use to generate images to use as references? Interesting. I have not even thought about using, um, I have a, I have some, an art AI app on my phone and then uh, pay $5 a month for it and play with it when I'm not doing it. I don't play games on my phone. I have the app make pictures for me and then I judge them. And uh, so, but I've, I haven't, haven't even thought about using AI to generate references, so... I think that's okay. Time for the marker. Especially okay, now if these, you used your keywords. These uh, highlights that I'm going to add are going to be too strong initially because this is stark white, and yeah. they're going to stand out and be, oh, my gosh, that's so strong. Um, but then we're going to let that dry a little bit, and then we're going to go back and tone them down. You'll okay. see what I mean in just a minute. Uh, so we're just going to put a little few spots. Yeah, on and those first top marks top of, of something that's like, like a highlight always feel um, too strong just because they uh, – when they're when they're alone those first couple of marks um they they really become a focal point but as you get more little touches of white all over the avocado uh, they'll they'll feel like they belong together well buddy says they look like twins up there it's a <laughs> and Matt, she says, um, this is a great exercise. Well, thanks. Well, it's definitely been a challenge, that's for sure here. Rose says, good combination of materials. I agree, Rose, and I would, I would say that it's a good and a surprising combination of materials. Markers with pastel, I would have never guessed. All right, so as I mentioned, we're going to – let's put in a couple more around here. I like that little piece that's going around here, even though it's not necessarily what's happening in the reference. Uh, now, what I said is that we're going to need to tone these down. So I'm going to tone them down with a little bit of colored pencil over the top. And it's still they're still going to be lighter. You see how that still stands out? Mm -hmm. But it's not – it's just not as strong as it was. So, because this this white honestly is is too strong. Um, let's let's go in. Where I need a little bit of a minty green. Oh, there it is. It's right there in front of me. I'll take that minty green and go right over the top of that. Add a little bit more variety in the process. Uh, Matt Buddy wonders if you're using Pro markers right now. Uh, and, uh, no, those are Posca markers. Posca marker. Uh, Posca, Posca markers. marker. Mm -hmm. Posca markers are paint markers, and I'm, I I want to say that the material in there is like somewhere in between um, gouache and acrylics. Mm-hmm. Because they do dry kind of matte, right? Yeah, they dry pretty chalky, actually. Yeah, and that's kind of like gouache. Mike says, you guys are an hour ahead of us. Haven't had dinner yet. This is making me hungry. Well, you must like avocados then. All right. Uh, let's try to get some of those cuts. You can see where I cut it across the center. Funky Groove, I've been reading your comments about AI, and don't you're not bashing anybody. We all have our own brand new opinions about this brand new technology, and um, and 
Many of us have reservations as to where it's going to take us. So these are conversations that are definitely worth having around AI. And we'll be having them for the next, um, you know, this whole year of 2023. It's going to be, I think AI is going to be on, on the cover of Time Magazine as person of the year. So we'll see how that shakes out. But we'll see uh, by the end of the year. I'm afraid AI is going to be all over the place. Okay. Well, I don't know how long I went over, but remember, we're I would using- say probably about five minutes. Okay. Four or five well, minutes, remember, we are using the reference as a reference. So we don't necessarily need to compare it to the reference, although mm-hmm. I know that's what everyone's doing. Uh, <laughs> let me get a little bit more yellow in here. The pastel right over the top. Uh, I think before- you have a, a lot of representationalism or realism in this artwork, and especially for 45 minutes. Yeah. A I- lot of variety in there. <laughs> Marks. And, uh, yeah, I'm happy with this challenge. Textures. Now, the thing is uh, to hide the reference photo and see if it uh, looks like it fools the eye, because that was the whole point there. And I guess my own criticism was would be that it's it's a little bit cooler than what I'd like it to be. I'd like it to be a little bit warmer mm-hmm. for me to come in there and yeah, just pick, pick it up. up. <laughs> pick it up, touch the top of the seed. There we go. My three sons, two fourteen, says fantastic. A scarf and tea says love it. All right. Well, and Jan says beautiful. Mike C says the drawing looks more real than the reference photo. <laughs> well, thank you. And I can't read any more comments because Matt has. Yeah, I turned it off because I'm having to go see and just I'm making sure. Oh, that, we've got to we've got to play our game. Yes, I'm we've making to, sure that uh, what. What um, what I have prepared is still, yeah, <laughs> is I'm, still there. I'm glad of that. So what are we talking about here? Well, um, of course, Ashley is going to be on the hot seat here because I'm next ready. week uh, we are going to be, he's going to be drawing, and uh, we need to see what he's going to be drawing, what prompt he's going to be drawing, um, and we have a winner, obviously. So you know what time it is. It is time for the game. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Let's Get Creative with your contestants, Matt and Ashley. And now tonight's Let's Get Creative Challenge. All right, so we have Ashley in the middle of the board here, and you guys have voted. And uh, we're going to find out right now when I push the button what Ashley's prompt is for next week. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that now. When he pushes the button. All right, the button has been pushed. Here it comes. And your prompt right. is three, three ways. ways. What in the world does that and mean? And what does three ways mean? Well, it means he's going to have to draw the same object for one minute, then five minutes, and then 30 minutes. Awesome. So next week, yeah. Ashley will actually be creating... And then we'll decide which is better. Three <laughs> drawings. Minute, the five-minute <laughs> or the 30-minute drawing. It uh, could be the one-minute drawing. And he'll create three drawings next week uh, for all of us. Uh, one for one minute, one for five minutes, and one for 30 minutes. Now, I do need to let you guys know the little caveat here. Mm-hmm. I, I am scheduled to have knee surgery next Tuesday. Yay! Uh, I'm hoping no. that that doesn't interfere with getting sketchy or the live lesson, uh, but it may. Um, if I can't, if I can't move around, I obviously can't get into the studio and, and be seated. Um, I don't know what to expect. I have a, a pretty bad torn meniscus, um, and um, that's going to have to be repaired or removed, one or the other. And that's happening next Tuesday. So hopefully I'll be good to go uh, next Wednesday. I'm planning on it. But if that should change, uh, I will let you guys know through email. And if you are not on the newsletter list, if you click on that link below for the three free course videos and ebooks, that will automatically put you on our newsletters list. And you will get links to, to free lessons on top of that. And you'll also be notified. Uh, when new lessons and new courses are produced and released at the virtual instructor. Um, So again, next week, I think I'm going to be good to go. But if not, I will let you guys know. And I'll also make you aware of that on the community board. So if everything goes as planned and as normal, you'll you'll got you guys will still vote 
on uh, the prompt for the following week. And also I'll post the, the reference uh, as soon as I have it. So Ashley's gonna be drawing three, the same subject three times That's next right. week. How do you feel about that? Well, uh, that I think uh, I'm interested to see how the first two drawings inform how I start or approach the third, the last one. Now, Edie pointed out that it only totals up to 36 minutes, one yes. minute, five minutes, 30. What I was thinking is we may actually, I mean, I have to change paper. Right. And we may actually talk a little bit, um, particularly like after the fifth, uh, five minute drawing, we might, we might kind of do a fast critique about the differences between the one and the five minute drawing. So I've got a little time built in there uh, for us to just kind of run our mouths a little bit. But Orion Nebula um, figured it out. I'm going to go over on the 30 minute drawing. I need that extra time built in. So yeah. So 36 minutes is probably good considering we'll be changing paper and maybe doing minute long critiques between each one. Uh, yeah. And we always kind of factor in a little bit of extra time. In fact, a lot of the drawings we do here on Getting Sketchy would normally take us about 30 minutes to do if we right. weren't talking. Uh, now tonight, the drawing that I did would have definitely taken me 45 no minutes. Matter no matter uh, what. No matter what. Uh, just because of the challenge of the actual prompt. Uh, but so the 36 minutes next week is actually more time than we would actually plan on a, a drawing that we would do here for getting sketchy um, and i see keith your comment good luck you seem to be spending a lot of time <laughs> at the doc tell you yeah i spent a lot of money at the doctor's office too in fact i've i've had so many renal ultrasounds that i had like redundant <laughs> scheduled renal ultrasounds uh so i called actually i had one scheduled for friday i called i said i think uh I've, i'm having too many renal ultrasounds i know how many kidney stones i have i know where they're at right. i don't need another ultrasound uh, so anyway, hopefully, mm -hmm. hopefully the knee surgery is the last piece I have to get out of the way. I do have a couple more stones, but they, they could stay there. They could stay there forever. Who knows? Uh, but you guys don't want to hear about that stuff. Just I'll, I'll keep you abreast on what's going on on the community tab, but also on our newsletter list or, or the email list. So anyway, I enjoyed uh, creating the drawing for you guys tonight. I'm looking forward to watch Ashley paint. Uh, the uh, French Bulldog. That's right, we're doing uh, French Bulldog. For the next hour. So we're going and we're going to go that. get ready for that, get set up. I have got a mess in front of me. There is pastel dust everywhere. There are colored pencils splayed out all over the place. No telling how much stuff I dropped in that <laughs> frantic uh, 45 minutes plus. Uh, but guys, I hope you have a wonderful week. Um, and uh, as always, we wish you all the very best in your artistic success. We're going to go ahead and sign out for this evening. Uh, good night, everybody.